care about Squint, a taste of closure for JavaScript devs. Now, I did closure script for a long time, and how I would talk about it is that I, I can kinda do JavaScript if I just squint my eyes a little bit, but I think you took that to a whole new dimension, yeah? Well, from from Borg to himself, that's that's the so Cherry. I'll get to it later. Okay, okay, okay. Well, squint at it, and you'll you'll have a closure script in a JavaScript environment. <laughs> okay, so we will begin now. Bye. Thank you. So, uh, in uh, just about 30 minutes' time, you'll be not really squint experts but uh, you'll have a good grasp about the, uh, the ecosystem around Squint and the um, um, yeah, closure script environment in general. There we have it, good. Um, so, um, animations was supposed to be here, but the React compiler going into the idea for this talk um, was kind of the catalyst for it all. Uh, I um, um, had I got word of that uh, the React compiler was going to be a thing, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could do closure script um, at compile time uh, and uh, get the JavaScript like into the React uh, repository and project uh, without the um, JavaScript uh, even even knowing about it, but ha having to deal with all of the um, things around that. Um, and um, yeah, this was the same time as the call for uh, proposals uh, for Heart of Closure was, was um, announced as well. So it was very top of mind for me. Um, I did some Svelte a couple of years earlier, and I remember thinking that it would be nice to have CLJS in the script tags of a Svelte file. And magically, someone had already thought about this. Uh, Danger Coder um, was the first kind of, they had a little example project where just, you know, Squint, um, spoiler alert, he was using Squint. That's the first kind of, when I saw the word at the first time. Um, he was using Squint to pre-process the, um, the content of the script tag, basically, and just transform the CLJS to, to JavaScript and then have Svelte do the rest. Uh, also, Jay Roos is another person who's uh, at a later point, but in a, I guess, I don't want to say more modern way, but more readable way at least. Um, and, and this is very similar to the way that I've um, implemented the tool that I'll be showing later. Uh, animation, animation, animation. Boom. So, the... Um, um, the mission statement that I set out for myself was to have a very low threshold for um, the JavaScript developer to try out Clojure in, in a familiar environment um, and um, do um, just, just get going, basically. We don't want anything. We don't w want any extra dependencies. We don't want uh, Clojure necessarily to be installed. We don't, we don't want Java. We don't want anything else. So it's, it should be just a, hopefully a one-liner and it just, it just works, trademarked. Um, and also, uh, obviously, the, the REPL experience is something that I want to drive through to the, to the JavaScript developer, because that's, um, Nowadays, with the builds being so quick, you can just hit save and everything is on the, the web page immediately. But the interactivity and incremental design of your functions and the, the, the flow of data is something that you can't really experience, or at least I haven't experienced in the JavaScript world yet. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the React compiler was kind of it kind of influenced me towards React, but then again, when checking the um, the Stack Overflow survey, it's 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 the it's it's the goat um, in in terms of like usability. Everyone's used React at one point or another, and um, it's. Uh, so 39.5% of people um, that answered this survey uh, under the web technologies and um, web frameworks and technologies um, has used uh, React in one way or, or another, um, beaten only by Node.js. Um, then it's the build tool, because I don't want, I basically want to 
target only the React project. And obviously there's Next.js, there, there are other things as well. Um, but looking at, again, the, 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 the survey right here, um, Vite is the thing that's taken um, the JavaScript world by storm and um, is now, it now powers a lot of really big frameworks. So it seems to be the, the um, de facto way of, of, of building a lot of things nowadays. So I chose to target React with, uh, with Vite. Did I mention Vit? It's called Vit. It's it's nice. Um, so uh, the ecosystem around uh, the JavaScript. Um, we do have like the 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 original uh, the original gangster closure script um, with the the CLJ and then Google Closure compiler kind of pipeline of of, of building it. There is also a standalone. Um, like um, yeah, it's called standalone, like a, just a bundle, but it's 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 very heavy. It's last I heard, it's about eight megabytes, um, and it's yeah. If there are other alternatives, I thought to myself that let's let's at least uh, investigate if we can get kind of circumvent these eight megabytes of setup um, and enter the small closure interpreter. Um, with NBB and again animations. Um, this should have come in later. But SCI and NBB and Skittle um, are um, are tools that are using the the SCI. So um, Babashka, we had a workshop uh, already yesterday, and um, um, all being powered by the, by the SCI um, under the hoods. Um, Skittle, I'm not going to go into it, but it allows you to um, write, you just have a static HTML um, file. Um, you, you reference some, uh, some um, well, you reference the, uh, like the SCI basically uh, hosted, and you can uh, evaluate CLJS within script tags uh, without anything. Um, Josh Glover has a nice thing about this. Um, I, I attended a meetup in, in Stockholm where he did a very nice demo. And I'm not sure if you did this uh, yesterday or today, but there's another thing that's, that is happening. Um, it was very, uh, very well received in, in Stockholm. So uh, there's also um, continuing on the uh, SCI uh, train track, the Sherry and the Squint tools. And as you might have figured out, I've chosen Squint for this thing. But just briefly on on Sherry, which is like the cousin of Squint, um, and, and and this was what um, what Jordan was mentioning that this um, and the description of this is so it's 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 so good that Sherry just to remember which is which because uh, one one's got immutable data structures and a lot more closure um, closure like behavior where where Squint is is just you know JavaScript data structures and um, and trying to be very minimal about it like just utilizing the JavaScript. Um, um, native thingies. Uh, but Cherry is the cherry picked, like we've cherry picked the good things from Clojure and put that into this tool. While, while Squint, you, you just have to squint at it and it's basically Clojure script. Um, I should have done that in the beginning <laughs> of the slide. Immutable, uh, immutable mentioned that it's it's got a it got the closure core library, um, and on the squint side we have native JavaScript stru data structures and a um, like a squint core that is uh, an implementation of closure core's library. But I'm not sure if it's uh, feature parity yet, but we'll, um, it's it's close to it. It's basically like writing closure. Um, so the uh, the compile string function, which is basically the um, the thing that I utilize the most with this tool, uh, we're now into Squint territory. Um, it's it's the bread and butter. Uh, it's the thing that takes Clojure script and spits out JavaScript. And um, you can see the 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 well the the, the output basically. Um, not going to go very very much into this uh, yet because I, I have a demo that might swell up the time of this talk. Um, but you by now you've, you've read it, you've seen it with your own eyes. Um, so 
introducing uh, React CLJS. It's an NPM package with embarrassingly little code inside of it, um, which is kind of an homage to how nice Squint is to work with and how much you can leverage that tool uh, by itself. Um, but it's basically got an NPX uh, script. So you, so you run NPX React CLJS uh, setup and it's um, run in your React rep repository and it sets everything up so you don't have to think any more about it. You just, um, with, with a little caveat that I'll get to, um, you can just start dropping files into your React project without any ceremony at all. Um, and it's a Vite plugin. This is the caveat. Um, you just have to do a small little, um, you have to go into your Vite config and you have to write a couple of characters to get the, um, um, the actual compile string transformation into the Vite build step. Um, so we actually take all of the CLJS code and uh, get JavaScript before uh, React takes over. Um, Going into the very embarrassingly small amount of code uh, in this tool, it's just installing React CLJS as a dev dependency, and it sets up a script for um, when we've got the, the React project running, we want to be able to start up a REPL quickly and without much ceremony. So I, I thought, let's just shove that in as well. Um, so it starts the squint CLJS REPL. Uh, this is the Vit plugin. Uh, again, we just check for a CL, uh, .cljs file, and um, if we um, if we found one, we uh, run compile string, take the content of the file, which is ClojureScript, and it spits out JavaScript for uh, for um, React to, to take over. Um, time, I didn't. Yeah, we're good. So demo time. Um, I've been dreading this part because this is a Linux distro and um, it's a bit volatile when I'm not at home and when there is no wind in the room and um, all of the planets are aligned. So let's see how this works. What we have now is uh, a terminal to, the, to your right and an Emacs session to your left. What I'm going to do is go for the latest Vite um, version and get the React template. So this is the, the basic like first thing you, um, you would do if you would start a new project. Um, we see the React into there. And this is where the setup script comes into play. So we're going to run, uh, run uh, React CLJS and set up. It's going to be thinking for a while. I hope not, not for too long. Um, there is a backup directory where, I, where I've already done this. Um, so if, uh, if we go for... Good. Enough talking. Um, so we've set it up. And this is the little caveat thing right here that I mentioned, that we have to go into the Vite config and we import the name of the, the plugin. It was just a CLJTGS. Uh, Copilot, be quiet. And then uh, from React CLJS, we have it in there. And then we'll shove it into the plugins array so that it, 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 it will basically do its thing, the, the transformation, before anything else gets their hand on it. Good. Clear that. NPM run dev. Hmm. Local halves. This is new. This is actually very new. Interesting. And imagine that I did this 100 times before stepping on stage. It's the demo devil. Localhost, is this because... Was that a solution to my problem? Someone said something? I, I would love to have input on this. Oh, well... Mm, it should have done that 
when we installed, if I heard npm install, I think maybe I didn't do that. Hmm. Dash p. Like that? <laughs> this became, became a pair programming session. I like it. This is why I am. Um, hmm. Maybe. Try the IP address with your original. One. <laughs> oh, so so with the the full thing, and uh, that's zero. The so so many good um, inputs, um, and how is it? Like on stage writing is just painful. Is dash to p the problem? But I, I guess you can't do this. That's just that seems silly. Then it can't find it. It's a, okay. So hmm. yeah, but I mean, I mean, the only thing that I've done differently is that I've connected to another, like a, 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 a Wi-Fi point. Um, yeah, and then a station. <laughs> Can't imagine I managed to type that over up on stage. Um, mm, mm, mm. Hmm. Well, then again, okay. So uh, uh, this first time, interesting. I guess this is what happens. This is the the nightmare for every live demo. Um, so let's see. What can we do? I heard something about dash dash host, and then? Oh. This is what you said, this is on you. Oh. Happy days. First try. Okay, so um, whoever said that, uh, let me buy you a beverage later. Um, okay, so this is the, um, this is, can we just, yes, swell that up a bit. Um, I'm just gonna shove this to another place, I'm not killing it. Um, it's over there now. Reload, good. So the counting here is the thing that I want to target and, and switch out for a closure script function. Um, right now it's just incrementing by one will do something really silly and instead increment by two on each click. Um, so what we have, I'll make it actually a little bit like that. And then we go into the source directory and we carelessly drop a CLJS file in here that is saved somehow. I thought, okay, spoiler alert. If I just kill this. Um, we name it counter, and then we do the uh, so double increment. We get the um, the input here, and we just increment it two times, and save. Um, mm -mm -mm. This should be enough. We split. We go to app.jsx, which is this right right part. Uh, Bada bing, bada boom. We import the newly created function. Increment, import from. Mm -hmm. Thank you. People are quick in this room. I don't need the, the compiler at all. I can just listen to the audience. Um, so we, um, we did this. Um, Let's not be fancy with Vim bindings. So, double increment. Another moment of truth. I, I, I didn't think just starting the, the process was going to be the moment of truth for me, but this is the real moment of truth. It should increment by two. Yeah. 
happy days. Happy day. I'm so happy about this. Um, so, I mean, this is what I practiced 100 times. This is not the first time this worked, but I'm so happy with the, the history we have now that this worked. Um, but so, we, we still got one thing left. As I mentioned, we want to be able to carelessly just drop CLJS files into our React project. We're, we're there uh, already. We can do that now. But we do also want to showcase the, the REPL-driven development of, um, of, uh, of Squint or in, in uh, ClojureScript in, in large. Um, so, if you remember the setup script, it injected um, a, a custom script that runs the REPL on port 8 on a port. Maybe, maybe this won't work either. Um, we run the CLJS, uh, CLJS uh, REPL. That worked splendidly. Oh. One eight eight eight. So we head up here, um, and I think I mean I'm an Emacs user myself, but in the readme of of this um, of this tool, I think let's just do Calva and VS Code because I think that's the what the majority of people are on. Um, that's not done yet, but it's it w it will be the same kind of workflow that you do just another tool. Um, mm. Oh no. I've done this before. Do it twice. Don't ask me why. And we're off. So, uh, REPL is connected. Um, the thing with this REPL, uh, which gets us almost to where, uh, as closure developers, we're, we're used to being, where it's connected to the running system, that is something we don't we don't have yet. Right now, it's the 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 browser uh, running this this process, but there's no communication between the REPL process that we just started and the running um, process in the browser. Skittle has this. Uh, a, a very clever solution where it opens up a, um, a web socket and then has a, a thing listening for that and shoving all of the messages going back and forth to the end REPL, um, which is amazing, which I would love to spend some time uh, helping uh, develop um, for, for Squint at this point. And um, of course, everyone else is welcome to do that too. Um, not sure at this point. If I should go in for 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 actually showing the REPL-driven uh, development, but you can uh, just imagine having some complex uh, logic right here. Um, uh, now the difficulty typing is setting in. Um, yeah, just do things in here. You you uh, boom, you evaluate it, and then you can start. Um, yeah, running it in here. God, and if we actually. The complex logic it returns a one, and we return a one, and you can start the, the iteration process as you're all aware of. Um, mm, mm, mm. We've got the REPL. We're going back to the slides. Um, live demo. Thank you. I didn't think it was actually going to be like this. Let, let, let's make a joke, and then just everything will go smoothly. Said no one ever. Um, I just, this weekend, um, I had a question about Squint, and I'm not very much, I, at least historically, I haven't um, engaged that much with the community. I've been, a, I've been a, an aggressive lurker, not writing anything, but reading everything. Um, but this weekend, I, I took the plunge and went to the Squint channel, and I asked this question um, regarding the, the, the Squint REPL and the communication between the browser and the, the, the running end REPL, um, the, the process. Um, and this was Saturday lunchtime, uh, 12.44. 12.45, I get an answer. <laughs> One minute, one minute. So I, um, I want to take this, um, like I want to end on this high note, and and uh, please ask everyone to give uh, Mr. Bork dude a big round of applause. We are, um, we're very happy to have you. Um, that's the talk. Thank you.